Welcome back to Bench Racer X here on RacerXOnline.com. I'm Kellen Brower along with Donnie Southers rehashing some stuff from San Francisco. The 450 main event was won by Chase Sexton. Eli Tomac finished second in the main event. And Donnie, despite it being a mutter, kind of a little bit of a throwback to last year. It felt like we were watching the title fight rehash between Sexton and Tomac, and we just missed Webb in that battle, but it was good to see those guys get up front again. Yeah, it was it was honestly incredible, and especially Eli making that late race charge. And you thought he, you know, there was a brief moment where I was like, he's going to catch him. He really mm-hmm. is. And uh, obviously, mud things happen. He didn't, but great race either way. Yeah, I know. Last week on Bench Racer X, we talked about if we should be concerned with Eli Tomac's ninth at the opener, and a lot of people were telling me this week, like, hey. Anaheim one is not a good round for Eli normally like take 2023 out of the picture where he won the opener uh Anaheim one has always been a little bit weird he doesn't seem to find the flow and then we have to get out of usually out of California before Eli really starts kind of figuring it out um so how nice is it I guess from your perspective to see Eli find his way onto the podium already and kind of rebound from a weirdo night at the opener Yeah, definitely much needed. I was also critical of him um, after his round one performance because it was his worst performance not crashing. So it was, you know, it was it was still bad, but not, you know, maybe not as bad as we want to make it seem. But this week, yeah, him rebounding, him being right there, him being up with Chase. It honestly felt like we were watching uh, East Rutherford last year because Rocks and Tomac and Chase went two, three, four behind Barsha. They were right there this time. Those guys, super underrated mud riders. So definitely much needed to have him back up front. Yeah, so Chase Sexton gets the win, and what we're going to talk about in this episode today is how both Chase and Eli, coming into San Francisco, uh, sung a lot of the praises of their team, Red Bull KTM and Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing, for the work that they put in between Anaheim and San Francisco, that they both felt that they were going to do a lot better regardless of if it was muddy or dry in San Francisco. It obviously is muddy. Chase said um, after the race that um, he has to give a huge shout-out to the team. They put in so much effort and hard work to get me to where I need to be. I was a bit disappointed that this round was a mutter as the progress we made from this week to last is pretty crazy, but I'm stoked to get a win for the team and it feels great to deliver this result. Um, So, you know, gets third at the opener, wins the second round, but how excited are you, Donnie, that, you know, it sounds like Chase has already kind of figured a lot of stuff out with KTM. We're a month removed from things being maybe like panic button for the team to now they feel like they're in a great spot, whether it's dry or wet. Yeah, yeah. So Chase said in the press conference that when he first got on the bike, he thought they were going to be fighting to get 10th, which I was shocked he said that out loud. You know, I know he won this week, but I was like, that's that's a crazy thing to actually say. But it's also incredible that he thinks they made so much ground when he was on the podium last week. It wasn't like he had a bad round like Eli. I know he snuck in because of Webb's crash, but still he was fourth thinking that he had that he's made up so much ground from his fourth. So I'm really, really excited to see what he brings to San Diego. Yeah, and on the flip side, Jet Lawrence, who wins the opening round, has a so-so second round. He de- he never really looked comfortable all day in the mud, which I, I thought kind of stood out to me as odd for Jet because he's I don't know, technically very sound. So you'd think he'd be uh, quite good in the mud. And he's won some mud races like outdoors and stuff like that. Um, But he had to say after the race, nothing too exciting to talk about in the main event. We're just happy to get out of here with some points. We aren't many points behind, so we're going to get some good races in before the break and hopefully get some wins. And the break he means is, I believe, after uh, Arizona, the sixth round, we have a weekend off. So he can kind of, you know, take a break there. But, um, you know, for your sake, Jet, doesn't have a good round, but still is second in points and is not that far off from a points perspective. Is this kind of the salvage ride that, you know, he needed, I guess, with how weird everything was going for him on the day? Yeah, like luckily the the pack is very bunched up right now in points and he's still sitting second. So he's not even as far back as it might feel getting a ninth, <laughs> but he it it was it was wild, especially watching from home how little he was on the broadcast because we've just become so accustomed to having him, you know, on track, off track, just all the time. But he had no interviews. He had nothing. They barely showed him. I think the most TV time he got was when he went down right in front of Chase on that last lap. So it was just such an odd experience in contrast to what we've seen Jet do for the last three years. Yeah, I I agree. Like, it felt very weird all day long. I don't know that I really ever, like, was watching Jet Lawrence and like saying, oh my God, like there he is, or this is what's going on. It was just like the quietest result ever. Um, In your opinion of this result though for Jet, is this 
in any way worrying that like there's going to be the rookie struggles out of him like this is obviously a learning curve of racing a 450 supercross in those type of conditions which he's never obviously done before um so it's it, it obviously could just be a wash away but it is still something that he had to experience for the first time and he's going to keep having moments like that where he runs into things that he's never had to deal with before all year long so what what do you think about that perspective yeah, 100%. I think he's happy that he's hopefully gotten it out of the way early in the year. A lot of people forget just how hard it is to race 17 rounds in a row for your first time. Ferrandis, uh, and was that 2020, 2021, was mm -hmm. the first guy in almost a decade that actually finished all 17 rounds. Yeah. So I think that he knows, and, and him and Hunter have talked about taking a page out of Eli's book of like, just ride smart, you know, live to fight another day, take those salvage rounds when you can. So I think he's walking out of here, you know, a handful of points down still in second and he has not, you know, no sweat off his back. Yeah. So now we're at a point where Chase Sexton is really the only guy that's had more or less two like good results. He's got on the podium twice. Um, another guy that we want to talk about here is Ken Roxon, who at the opener gets 10th. This round he gets third. And you could make an argument for both rounds that Roxon could have won or should have at least been first or second um, this round. I don't know that anybody even realizes he whole shot the main event. I know Chase Sexton timed the gate and that was unbelievable, but he almost went down going to the first corner and Roxon just snuck through, grabbed the whole shot. And then immediately the bike stalled or stopped or whatever. And he's just sitting on the first jump, watching the whole field go by, but still gets back to third. Um, what do you make of Roxon through two rounds being, I don't know, arguably one of the best guys in the field, but having 10, three on the board as a result card for him. It's just, it feels like such rocks and luck that we've seen him have in the last few years. It kind of, it's kind of similar to Joe Shimoda in the, uh, in the 250 class where he is so fast and he has proven how fast he is. And I think his lap times, I think he had four lap times under like 128. I don't remember the exact number. Nobody else had four lap times in that. Even Chase, like he, and he was coming through the pack too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lap times. And it's just like, man, what does this guy have to do to catch a break? Because he could easily be 1-1 because he had great starts. Well, he had an okay start, I guess, at A1. But in the heat race, he did. And you're just like, man, what does this guy got to do to have a break? But yeah. I think coming in, you know, we still have, what, seven guys within 12 points after two rounds. It's not the tightest it's ever been, but that's still really tight. Yeah, Jason Anderson had a bad round. We'll, we'll briefly mention him because he went down in the first corner. He obviously gets second at the opener. But I want to pitch this to you, Donnie. We got uh, Anderson, who's obviously been on the podium. We have Plessinger, who has now gotten two top five results. And then we have Roxon, Jet, Eli, Chase, all mixing it up. And then Webb obviously has had the speed through the first couple of rounds to mix it up as well. So there's, what, seven guys right there? If you're if you're going into San Diego this weekend and you had to pick two of those guys that will not finish inside of the top five, who are you picking? Oh God, that is not something I want to do. <laughs> going into San Diego. I have to pick two. Um I mean, normally I would say AP because I think that he's probably in a typical condition, you know, like he did have a really good A1, but you got to remember that Malcolm, Kenny, like there were a lot of guys that were down early way back in the pack. So I think that, I think he probably loses to one or two of those guys. So I'll say AP is out and you know what? Anderson, which I hate because he has all the raw speed, but if I have to pick somebody that's inconsistent, I'll go with Anderson. Yeah, well, and my hope of it, I hope they go one-two this weekend and really just throw a curveball at everybody. How, how cool would that be if they... That would be incredible, <laughs> yeah. And then we have a real series heading into the second Anaheim uh, in two weeks' time. Well, that is going to do it for us on this episode of Bench Racer X, highlighting some of the podium figures from the 450 main event at San Francisco. Donnie, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you guys all for tuning in. Be sure to head over to racerxonline.com for all your motocross and supercross news.